Hello reformers and welcome to A Veil of Crows. This is available on Steam Early Access right now. You can check out the Steam Store page by clicking the link in the description. And this is a mix between Total War and Mountain Blade Warband. Takes a variety of different things from both games and melds them together, hopefully seamlessly. From what I've seen so far, everything is working as intended. Of course, this is early access, so there are going to be bugs, there are going to be crashes, and there are going to be certain things that will change over time. Most notably, what I've seen so far is the difficulty is slightly a little bit too highly tuned, at least from what I can tell right now, it's a little bit too highly tuned because, well, you'll see when we get in the game. So let's let's just go in and we're going to start, as you can see here, Veil of Crows, put your leader on the throne or die trying. Now, what is included in the game is a very unique mechanic, actually maybe not too unique because I think a variety of other games do this, but not in this way. And what it entails is basically you are your hero, and if your hero dies, then you're done. That's game over. But when you start a new character, that character joins the world that your previous character was a part of. So technically, if you join, you know, let, let's just have an example here while I name myself James. Yes, we're going to go with that. But yes, an example would be something like, well, let's see here. Mm, okay, so let's say you create a new character on, well, in January 2017, and let's say that character dies in June 2017, and then you make another one in June 2017, and if that one, you know, goes into the world, then it will be exactly the same date as you were, you know, previously with your other character. So all of the events that have transpired in that time have happened. So this is us, you know, customizing our units and indeed our kind of how we look and everything in the game. So yeah, this is, you know, we can choose a different coat of arms. You can choose a variety of different symbols here that will appear on our shield and armor. I quite like this one. Gonna probably go for something maybe a bit purplish. I think that's quite nice. We're gonna go for a little bit of a darker saturation, I think. And the lightness, I think I'm gonna try and make it you know, quite dark. And then we're gonna make the background what goes with purple? I don't know, really. Uh, okay, yeah, well, I guess we'll just go with that. I'm just going to make it extremely light because I want to. I want to make it a bit white. There you go. I think that's. I think that's pretty nice. Okay, so we're going to go with that. And our yes, enter your leader's name. Enter my leader's name. What? Enter my leader's. Name? Okay, that's a bit weird because I thought that it was James, but apparently, apparently not. I think this is our army name, so I'm going to call it Tea and Biscuits. Biscuits. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, let, uh, let me just type properly, shall I? There we go. Okay. So, yes, faction. Tea and biscuits. That, that, that's our faction, technically. And now we are here on the class selection screen. As you can see here, each class is affiliated with a certain difficulty level. So, obviously, the adventurer, which is kind of like the standard here. You start alone with a little gold and a trusty sword and shield. And the faction relation affects all factions are neutral except bandits and deserters. They will attack on sight. So that actually seems pretty decent. I actually quite like the adventurer, I think. And there are a number of others like the wanderer. You start with a spear. All factions are neutral. And then, of course, we have a refugee here. You begin with a few peasants and even smaller amount of gold. So what you can do with the various amounts of... Oh. It just crashed. All right, so here we are again on the character selection screen. Just had to go through the character creation a little bit more there. But yes, as you can see, we have adventurer, refugee, and all that sort of thing. But the thing is with this, you can actually do various work in each of the towns as far as I'm aware. I have not done this before, so you know, don't quote me on this. But yeah, there are a number of other things that you can play as as well. For example, a deserter. But... With this, the difficulty is extremely difficult because every faction is after you. Absolutely every faction. So obviously this is something that you're going to want to take if you are a veteran at playing the game. I'm not, obviously, so I'm probably going to go with something else. But as you can see here, no going back. Oh yeah, look at that. That is pretty insane. Bandits are your only friend here. Everyone else wants your head on a stick. 
And then of course you have a bastard here as well. You're poor, wandering alone. You must find some followers fast or die. And then you have a merchant. You can trade in this game as well. I have not found out how to do that. I'm not very experienced in the game so far. I went through the prologue and I got to say the prologue is not particularly useful. I think it's much more useful to just play the game. But yeah, the prologue basically shows you the, well, starting combat and the starting siege because you can siege towns and things in this game but that's it it doesn't really tell you how to start so i would highly recommend if you're going to pick this up to start yourself in maybe a sandbox game or maybe just doing the mode that i'm doing right here that's probably the the best way to go anyway location yeah we can choose where we start i'm probably going to be attempting to start on the great plains i think that's probably going to be the best way for me to go because it's quite flat and it's not very cold and you know it, it's it's just pleasant overall so yeah i have i do already have a previous world as you can tell this will start a new game the world remains as you left it but you will no longer have control of your previous faction if you wish you can reset the world in the game's options do you wish to proceed yes i do there you go so i did actually have a, a previous faction called tea and biscuits it was basically just my test faction just to see what was going on make sure that i knew you know kind of the basics and what to do and hopefully i will you know not embarrass myself too much a new day your journey to this point has not been easy and many new challenges lay ahead something tells you your next few choices will be the difference between survival and death your best chance is to seek some work and perhaps some company visiting some of the local villages may prove fruitful begin your journey okay so here you go now do bear in mind i'm just going to pause here real quick do bear in mind that this game with the exception of you pressing space will continue to run so it is real time it does have the same kind of pause mechanic that mountain blade has but it is a little bit more shall we say adaptable because as you can see this is me pressing space once this is me pressing space again and that's me pressing space again so that was three you know three presses of space and what that does is it basically means that you are at one time speed this is us at one time speed and i think the other speed is at 10 times speed so you can change the speed by pressing space and then it will alternate between the two you know slowest and the fastest so that is pretty awesome in my opinion because mountain blade does have a speed up function but there's only two so if you wanted to have a medium you know setting you have times two and times five there as well so if you didn't want to be so fast then you know you can actually decide that if you so desire anyway here we go we're at mosfell lumber yard and we have a number of different options as you can see here you can seek audience with the village leader you can enter the marketplace you can upgrade peasants which might be an idea once I actually gain some peasants. And we, and then this is all of the aggressive stuff. Offer to spare the lives of all military units guarding the village, provided they leave immediately. Let's take everything not da nailed down. So that's obviously, you know, raid it. And then we can kill the villagers and take the village for ourselves. So if we want to inhabit this town and make it our own, then we can very easily do that. Obviously, the variety of different ways you can play the game have not been fully explored yet. But I highly, highly think and would you know suggest to say that you can very easily and maybe it's encouraged to actually play as a bandit because as you've seen on the character select screen you can actually play with the bandits being on your side which is actually very cool anyway let's enter the marketplace and we're going to see if anyone okay yeah so we do have four villagers and they can join me i have 120 gold i'm going to hire them and we can upgrade those peasants and we can train them as hatchet men. Five gold. You have four peasants available. Hatchet men are weak shock units, best used against sword wielding opponents. But that's the thing. Do we want to upgrade them for five gold each? Because that's going to be that's going to be another twenty gold, which is pretty. You know, it's it's quite a lot. You know, it's quite a lot. So instead, I think. Can I, I can purchase some resources, so I can purchase lumber here, and that's going to cost me a little bit of gold. But that's the thing, what I can do is I can trade, I would assume, I can trade this lumber with, you know, a town or whatever. I'm going to buy five pieces of lumber, 
And then we're going to see... Do I actually have that? Yes, I do. There you go. Okay, so that's cool. Because in on my previous character, it was a merchant. He was a merchant. And I'm actually just going to pause here once again. But yeah, he was a merchant and he had a good amount of diplomacy and authority. And what that means is, well, you can actually just see here. Diplomacy increases happiness in towns, increases negotiation chances, and reduces cost of bribes. So very, very good if you're going to be a trader. And then authority, it lowers the army cost and the trade prices. So if you wanted to, you know, actually do some trading, I'm pretty sure the trading and economy in this game is probably going to be much better than that in Mountain Blade. Because Mountain Blade is quite, shall we say, straightforward. You know, you just buy a thing here and then you sell a thing there. Whereas this is a little bit more freeform. You kind of have to do your own research. You can't assess the prices and have it automatically, you know, do whatever. But as you can see here, you can declare your hero king of the entire land. And they must be minimum level 15. Or in, in general, you can just name them king and then people will be like, Oh no, I very much hate you. Yes, exactly. So yeah, we can see here our upgrades here. I think I think we don't really have any so far. So that's absolutely fine. But yeah, there you go. We do actually have some peasants here. And I bought some lumber as well. I don't know whether that was actually a good idea. I think it probably wasn't. But there's some bandits. There's actually 10 bandits over there. We have a population of 5 at the moment. What do I have? I only have peasants. I literally only have peasants. That's very sad, isn't it? Oh my. That is actually very sad. Okay, well, let's, let's move at times 2 speed. And I'm going to try and find another... Let's go at times 5. Let's just go at times 10. Why not? And I'm going to try and find another village. As you can see, there's huge amounts of different enemies and, and all kinds of units around here from the varying factions. But as you can see, there are already bandit armies. Yeah, bandit armies. And they have 44 units in that army over there. We certainly do not want to get into a hustle. A hustle? A hustle and bustle with them. Yes, yeah, so you don't want to, you know, get into any kind of combat with them. That's for sure. But what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get a good amount of peasants. Uh, can they actually... Oh, they can upgrade them as serfs. Ah, fantastic. Okay, so serfs are weak melee units best used against cavalry. So if you so desire, you can actually get different kinds of peasant units. Now, of course, I'm unaware of all of this because, as I say, I only just you know, initially took a look at things and I thought it would be quite fun to actually look around together. So you and I are both seeing this at the same time. So anyway, let's go and see if we can purchase a couple more of these. Whoa, there's a... What? I can... I could purchase huge amounts of villagers. Okay, so I'm actually going to get... Let's get 10. Alright. Let's get 10. And what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade... How many... How much money do I have? I have 35. So technically, I can train some people. So I'm going to train... I don't know, four of them, I guess. I... <laughs> This is <laughs> this is probably not going to work too well. This is probably not going to work too well. Okay, so maybe I can find a town. I would quite like to find a town. So let's see if we can find one. Because if I can sell this lumber for a profit. Because, I mean, how much did I buy it for? 15 gold, I think. Something like that. So it would be nice if we could maybe find a town somewhere. See, now, th this is the thing. This game is completely in the fog of war, as you can see here. Even if you uncover it... Oh, and I needed to turn off the autosave. I did forget to do that in my previous little look at it. But as you can see here, yeah, the autosave is a little bit intrusive. Maybe there could be something done about that. Because having that screen come up, I'm not a big fan of that, i got to say. But, well, maybe that's the only way that could be done. Because this game is actually made by one person. And I'm actually really amazed by that. Because it's actually looking really, really promising as it is right now. Oh, we're losing five gold. Ooh, that's that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to have to go over there very, very quickly because we're going to run out of gold very soon. All right, so request an audience with the Lord. Okay, so now here's the thing. When I decided to say we are looking for work, yeah, when I did that, it gave me a quest that required me to kill a bandit party of 150. Yeah. 150 units, so I'm pretty sure that's not a good idea. What about a trade deal? 
We must improve relations with House 6 before establishing a trade agreement. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Okay, so what about bring resources? Okay, so resources... Yeah, so as you can see, the tasks from the various lords do seem to be quite extravagant because this is what you need to do. Resources needed. 121 leather, 121 stone, and 121 food, which is, in my opinion, pretty insane. But, I mean, that could just be me. I mean, that's the thing. It's... It's a learning experience, shall we say. It is a learning experience. So, um, maybe I can find a bandit party. What about them? They are 16, but they have horses, which I'm not particularly happy about. Maybe we could actually find a bandit party without any horses. And maybe we could outnumber them a little bit. And if they are actually able to give us some loot, I think that would be amazing. That would be fantastic. That would be fantastic, really. So, ah, uh, there's 60. No. No, that's a patrol. No, we don't... See, that's the thing. We don't want to attack any of the factions either. Because we, if, if we attack any of the factions, they're going to rain hell down upon us. And that would not be very nice. So, I'm going to try my best to find some bandits. It's very difficult as it is. Because there are, obviously, knights and various, you know, shadowy effects going on and things, and we've just paid our units once more. I am very worried about this. I probably should not have spent that much money, should I? Probably not. Maybe I should just... Should I just be a bandit? <laughs> that would probably be a bad idea, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, well, let's have a look. There's a patrol there. Ah, neutral scouts! Okay, so let's do it. Let's attack the neutral scouts. They are neutral. I don't know what that what that's really going to do, but I, I guess we're just going to attack them. Can, can I can I can I please can I please catch up to? You? Oh, did you see that? They just combined themselves. Yeah, did you know that? Yeah, bandits can combine themselves and make bigger armies in real time. So. Yeah, there's also that. Anyway, we can request an audience with the leader. I don't think we're going to do that. I could seek to trade. We would like to trade resources. Can I? Standing before us as a force of... Can, can I not? Can I not trade resources? Apparently I can't. I can hire some of their soldiers, but I don't really want to do that either. So I guess I'm just going to attack them. An unexpected attack is what they are not expecting. All right. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, it is an unexpected attack after all. Anyway, there's the balance of power. That indicates how strong your army is going to be against theirs. As you can see, we are slightly on the winning side of things. So I guess we're going to go in and take a look at the combat system. Obviously, the combat system is very Total War-esque. And I'm not very familiar with Total War in general because I personally feel like you need to be very proficient at it for making videos or at the very least you need you know people not to absolutely rip you a new one for making a small mistake so yeah that's primarily the reason why i do not play it on the channel so anyway uh let's let's see what we can do here so as you can see we have all of our peasants here i think we have our serfs the ones without the pitchforks yes and we're going to select all of our units right here and then we're going to tell them to go this way and we can tell them to get into a sorted formation as you can see there now the sorted formation is accessible by holding control and then using right mouse button now when I first entered the game I personally found the controls to be pretty difficult to get used to because obviously I'm used to standard sort of strategy games like Starcraft and Supreme Commander and things like that where most of the formations are done you know, basically automatically, so I didn't really need to do anything like that. But as this is more of a, I, I suppose, slower strategy, you know, Total War-esque, I guess. Uh, wh where are the enemies? That is a problem as well. There is no mini-map, so... I... Oh no. Oh no. Am I being attacked right now? I, I don't even know. Oh no, there we go. Okay, there's my people. So I'm gonna just zoom out real quick here. So you can zoom out all the way, which is actually really nice. I didn't know you could do that. And where are the enemies? That's the thing. That's the thing we've got to find right now. Where are the enemies? Where are they? Am I actually able to see them from this much zoomed out? Ah, there they are. Okay, so they're all the way over there. So we can basically just go across the river right here, and we don't need to worry about them attacking us. Now, do bear in mind that height advantage has an effect. So if they have ranged 
you know, ranged units, then there's going to be hell to pay for us. I don't think they do, actually. I think they only have regular, you know, bandit units, which is actually really good. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> we kind of need to do this. If we do this and we're able to eliminate them, we are going to be in a pretty good spot because if we can maybe take some of them prisoner, I don't know whether that's even possible, but if we can take some of them prisoner, if we can loot them and maybe take some of their gear and sell that, then I think we're going to be in a really good position. But if we are unable to, and if we actually, you know, actually get killed as a result of them being too powerful for us, then things are not going to go too well. And yeah, we might have some problems but yeah, let's see Let's see what we're able to do here. So to attack, what you do is you hold control and then you drag a box with left click over the enemies. And then your units will charge in. So let's watch and see what our units are able to do. I'm actually going to deselect so that you can actually see a little bit easier what's going on. Although <laughs> maybe me deselecting is not a good idea because if I deselect then I have no idea who is winning. Okay, so let's say, yeah, it seems like we are going to be winning quite easily here. And as you can see, Wanderer James is doing a, a reasonably good job. He's getting some decent experience. Now bear in mind, obviously, we do need to get our hero leveled up to be able to declare ourselves king of the surrounding lands and all that sort of thing. Yeah, all that sort of thing. King of our own faction, shall we say. But as you can see, it seems quite easy to eliminate this party of bandits, which is really nice because in the past I've attempted to actually do these kinds of things and it did not work out too well. Let's just say that. Anyway, we lost one unit. One unit total and we killed 11, so that's very nice. And I think there's probably... Is there going to be another loading screen? Yeah, there is another loading screen. Okay, so at, at the very least... At least we know now that, you know, there are a number of loading screens in between the scenes, which is absolutely fine because you can change the amount of people on the fields of battle. Wait a minute. Is that it? Did I, did I not get any loot? Oh my. Oh my. Okay, so it seems like I am at a bit of a loss here then because I don't know how I'm supposed to get money. That's the thing. I don't know how I'm supposed to get money. Do, am I supposed to actually attack villages and things like that? Oh, and the autosave. I really should have turned that off. Yeah, well, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a look at the options now just so that you all can see what the options are like because the reason... Uh, that's what I said. The reason for the loading screens is quite apparent once you take a look at that. Have I paused everything? Yes, I have. There we go. Okay. So, where are the options? Well, I can see the controls. Adjust game options not implemented. Okay, so apparently I'm going to need to save and exit. And then we can actually take a look at the options on the main menu. And yeah, I'm going to try and see if I can find a way to make some cash. I think I probably can maybe raid a village. Maybe I'm going to need to raid a village and see what I can do about gaining resources that way. I'm not entirely sure. But I suppose we'll find out as time goes on. But as you can see, the options are extensive. You have a number of different graphics options, grass distance and, you know, all kinds of different distances. Bloom, anti-aliasing. And then you also have arrows staying, which is really cool because obviously then you can see the arrows on the ground and in walls and in, in bodies and all that sort of thing. And as you can see here, arrow count is on 800. So you can see 800 arrows before they disappear. Body count is on 300 and max battle size is 200. Over 300 is not recommended. And I can tell you that the performance is okay. You know, it is not running at a constant 60. Uh, it's not running at a very high frame rate at all. It's running at about 30 most of the time, dependent on where you are and what you're doing, which is, in my opinion, okay. Because it is early access, there is going to be a lot of optimization to be done. And once that is all done, I'm pretty sure this will be a very promising title. So if you would like to check it out, once again, the link is in the description. And uh, yeah, that will take you to the Steam Store page. So I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.